I've been working on my game After Blast for the past year now, and it's almost done. But there's just one small, teeny tiny problem. It's boring. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I added three game modes to my multiplayer first person shooter game in just two months. In the last two videos for After Blast, I figured out how to add multiplayer servers and server authoritative movement. Don't even get me started on the torture I went through to do that. I also added multiple types of guns to the game. An assault rifle, a shotgun, a sniper, and a submachine gun. But the guns really aren't that different. They're just the same gun, but with different sounds. But I'm sure that the developer will put out an update soon enough. There was also this annoying bug that I finally fixed, which is where the player body would fold into itself like an insect. Why am I holding the gun like this? <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. Where's the circle? <laughs> we're back, we're back where we were. We just were JJ. <laughs> Stop bumping into I spent weeks trying to figure out why this bug even existed. I tried new animations to see if it was something with my rig. Nope. Maybe it wasn't animations, but the player itself. So I tried using a different player model. Um, uh, nope, that didn't work either. In the end, it turned out that there wasn't even anything wrong with my code. Not a single error or warning. The Unity package that I had been using for the first person animations and rigging, FPS Animator, had a bug where if the player spawned or respawned, which disabled the player game object, the animator would freak out and think that the leg was the arm and the head was the leg and basically just die. So I let the developer of the FPS Animator package know about the bug and he was able to fix it in a day. Samson, your memory will never be forgotten. Gotten. Imagine spending weeks trying to fix a bug in your code to find out it wasn't even your code. I'm not sure if I should be glad or angry. So basically all the bugs from After Blast had been fixed. It would be really unfortunate that if for some odd reason my computer suddenly decided to spaz out and corrupt my SSD and delete months of hard work. Man, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Luckily, I made sure that I had created a backup using GitHub, which I absolutely hate. Throughout all my years as a game developer, I've been avoiding GitHub because it's complicated and doesn't make any sense. But fortunately, I was able to save After Blast from being corrupted, so I guess I'll be using it from now on. So with all of the bugs, actually just one bug if you think about it, disappeared and the project saved, the game was basically just an endless pit of killing. It's kind of like my life. It had no point. And honestly, an endless pit of killing is kind of boring. So that's what led me to the idea to create multiple game modes. So I brainstormed some ideas and came up with three different modes. There's gonna be Capture the Flag, Deathmatch, and Team Deathmatch. Yeah, I know, completely original. I thought that these game modes would be the easiest to create because they were so simple, but I was completely wrong. I also made a poll to see which game mode you guys would want me to add, but the results were really confusing. You see, in the comments of the last After Blast video, some people were complaining that After Blast is just a copy off of Fortnite, but you complete bots voted for Battle Royale? The main game mode of Fortnite? Honestly, what is wrong with you people? So after briefly thinking about it, I decided to add all three game modes, because why the scope creep not? So I put together a quick game selection menu so you can choose which game that you want to load into and began researching how to actually add the game modes. I've played games with multiple game modes before like Marvel Rivals, Fortnite, and Minecraft and it's so surprising how well the servers can handle millions of players. So I had known that it wouldn't exactly be easy to create it for my game. To put the different modes into my game, I needed to learn about something called scene stacking which is basically a way of putting multiple levels into one server and then letting players choose between which level they want to play. This way, instead of having just one level for the whole server, there are multiple levels. This makes it so you can have as many game modes as you want. I'm 99.345% sure that this is how all the multiplayer games do it. But if I'm wrong, then I'm gonna have to completely rewrite thousands of lines of code. Oh well, that's the life of a programmer. So instead of begging for help in the Unity multiplayer server like a wimp, I decided to take matters into my own hands and read the documentation to figure it out for myself, because that's what real programmers do.
I decided to beg for help in the Unity multiplayer Discord server and I was guided to the correct way of programmer by Max. Thank you Max. If there were no people like Max, programmers would not exist. Stack Overflow, Unity Answers, every single programming help form would vanish leaving no trace of the sunlight starved creature known as the programmer. Anyways, now that I had some help, I made three scenes for each game mode and then made the server load in all of the scenes. So now it looks like this. Each platform is for each game mode and only the server can see all of the game mode levels at once. When a player joins, they can only see the level that they chose. So if a player decides that they want to join the deathmatch, they'll load into the deathmatch scene only. Let me tell you, the scene stacking business was not easy. I spent weeks pulling my hair out. I used to think that the shorter the documentation was, the easier it would be to use it. Wrong. It's the complete opposite. And even though there was documentation, it's totally not the same thing as getting help from actual people who know the code. Even ChatGPT couldn't help me, as this was basically uncharted territory. Working on this multiplayer game day and night was really taking a toll on me, but luckily, I was using my limited edition Jackson Academy X Osaka mousepad, made with 100% cotton. This mousepad is superior to any of the other gaming mousepads on the market. With other mousepads, the mouse sticks to it and barely moves, but with the Osaka branded version, your mouse glides on a cushion of air. Limited edition 100% cotton Jackson Academy X Osaka premium gaming mousepad. I use this mouse when I'm programming and gaming, and it has not disappointed me yet. Buy it now at jacksonacademy.shop before it goes out of stock. Back to After Blast, I added a round timer and a victory screen when the round ends. The deathmatch doesn't really have any objective, just eliminate as many players as you can. But for the capture the flag and team deathmatch game modes, I'm gonna have to get creative with my code because I have absolutely no idea how to create a team based game mode. The way capture the flag works, if you live under a rock, there are two teams and each team has their own base. The objective is to capture the opposing team's flag and bring it to your own base. And once you do that, you have one point and you have to repeat this until you reach five points. The thing is, if another team steals your flag and you have theirs, you have to get your flag back before you can capture the other team's flag. So what I had to do was code in a flag that could be carried around by each player and detect when it touches the other team's base. That was actually the surprisingly easy part. I had basically done all of the hard work before, scene stacking, server authoritative movement and servers, so it was gonna be all a breeze. Another thing was that I had to change the player's nicknames. You see, in most multiplayer games, your nickname is connected to an account, which makes it easy to track what you do, like how many games you play, the skins that you buy, and more. It also makes it easy to ban the player if they're hacking. But in After Blast, there weren't really any accounts. You just type in your username before each match and press play. This was something I had never done before, and it was a pretty daunting task. I was not looking forward to making a player account system, because this could have probably taken weeks of testing and writing code. Luckily, I found a tutorial called How to Connect Your Steam Account to Unity. This tutorial was a complete lifesaver. Instead of creating my own account system, I could use Steam itself to connect the player. How it works is when you start up my game after Blast, you have to sign in with your Steam account, and once you connect your Steam account, you can do a whole bunch of things like invite your friends, get achievements, and access the Steam store, which I have no idea how it works. So I quickly followed the tutorial, and then also figured out how to make the player connect an account with Unity. So now you can sign in with Google. So now you can sign in with both Google and Steam, and that gives you another option in case you don't have a Steam account. And you can also change your username in the settings. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Smash subscribe because at 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing an EO reveal, and you totally don't want to miss that. After Blast is also on Steam, so be sure to wishlist it, and once I finish the game modes, I'll be publishing the beta version. I also need help coming up with ideas for new game modes, skins, weapons, and level ideas. So if you think you could help me with the game, join my Discord server and leave me a message. And if you want to learn programming, check out my Ultimate Scratch 3.0 video game programming course for beginners, where I show you how to make games like Flappy Bird, Geometry Dash, Subway Surfers, Minecraft, a 3D game, and a whole bunch of unreleased scratch hacks.